Hello and welcome. My name is Deborah Rethwin Arvinlow, and I'm a blogger and photographer for Second Life. Today I'm going to show you how to create a glow effect like the one you see on screen here. Glow effects like this work best when you are taking a green screen photo because you can use the clipping masks to make it so that the glow stays only on the avatar. With flat photos, unfortunately, you have to use a lot more precision and the glow effect can leach out into the other parts of the photo. So it is not impossible, but it is more difficult to do this on a flat photo than on a green screen photo with layers. So with layers, you can create clipping masks, which allow the glow effect to only go on the avatar portion of the photo. So here I have a layer that is my avatar layer and then I have layers above that which are the glow layers. So if I unclipped them, all of that glow stuff would leach out into the rest of the photo and then the effect is sort of lost because you can't really tell how the glow is on my avatar. So instead I clip them to my avatar layer and then they can't go outside of the bounds of that. So if I hold alt and then I hover over the middle of the line, it pulls up this clipping, ma ma clipping mask <laughs> menu. So I'll click that and it'll clip these layers. Also you can just right click and then down here it will say create clipping mask. So I'm going to show you how to do this glow effect. The glow effect works for any kind of glow. I'm going to show you in particular the fire glow effect, but if you change the color it could be any kind of glow you want. So the first thing I want to do is I want to duplicate my avatar layer, which is this layer here. So I'm going to hit Control J to duplicate it, or you can right click and duplicate layer. I believe on a Mac it would be Command J. So now I'm going to clip this layer to my layer below it. So the duplicate layer I clip by either right clicking and selecting Create Clipping Mask, or by hitting, holding Alt and clipping the layer by hovering over the line in between them. And you can see here that when I clip it, it makes the alphas finer. So if I unclip it, my hair starts to get really thick because the alphas are laying on top of one another. So it is good anytime you duplicate your layers with hair, especially hair with alphas in particular, to always clip that layer. Okay, so now that I have this layer, what I want to do is I want to go in to the Levels menu. So I'm going to hit Control L, and that brings me to the Levels menu. You can also go to Image, Adjustments, and Levels. So what I want to do is I want to go into my channel, and I want to choose first red, and I want to drag my red up so that it creates a super bright red effect. And then here I'm going to go over to blue and I'm going to drag that over to make it orange. So basically what you want to do is make your whole layer here very red-orange colored. You want to make it similar to the red-orange color that you have in your fire. And these fire overlays are actually just images that I got that are royalty free of sparks from fire. So it's not a brush or anything, it's just an overlay. And there's a separate video where you can learn to do that. So I've created this and I may want to adjust it a little if I find that the color isn't quite what I needed. So anytime you want to adjust it, you can just go to Control U and open Hue Saturation and you can change your hue to whatever you need. You can also change the lightness, you can change the saturation, you can change all of those things. Okay, so I've created a super orangey layer, and I don't want it to cover my whole body, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mask for this layer so that it disappears, and then I can draw it in using the mask, similar to what I do with contouring in my uh, curves video. So I'm going to go down here to the layer mask button and I'm going to hold alt and click layer mask. 
And what that does is it creates the black layer mask that basically blacks out that whole layer so you can't see it. But it's still there, it's just invisible. Then what I want to do is similar to when I'm doing contouring, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to change my, I'm going to have my layer mask selected here, layer mask. And then I'm going to change my brush to white and I'm going to paint in the effects on my photo. So I'm going to reduce my brush size a little bit and I'm going to have my flow up here at 3 to 5 percent basically. So your opacity will remain at 100 and then your flow will be at 3 to 5 percent. And here I want this to be normal, mode normal. Then I'm going to have my brush at whatever size works for the area. And you don't have to be too careful with it around the edges because it's clipped. So nothing that you do is going to go outside of the bounds. Then what I want to do is I want to look at where would firelight be coming from. So I know there's going to be a lot of firelight here. And here I can see I have these flame sparks coming up. So I know there's going to be fire coming here and here. So that is how I choose where to put my glow. You determine where the light is going to come from, from the fire or moonlight or whatever glow effect you are trying to make. Determine where glow should hit. If you are lost for trying to figure that out, just take a look at some photos of where glow comes into play. So I'm going to go here and just start adding some glow. So you can see that it begins to take on that color. So I know that metal is reflective, so I'm going to make sure that I put some on the metal. So that's going to be reflective. I'm going to do the same thing over here, put it along the edge of the metal. And you can see that glow effect starting to come in from this layer here. So I know that my knuckles are near the fire, so I want to do that. Add a little bit of glow to those. Add a little glow to the leather hilt. Anywhere you think that you might see some glow, you start adding that using your brush with the white color at a low flow so it doesn't go too fast, and just adding that color into places. Just basically spot highlighting areas where you think that the fire should show up. And anywhere that has reflective surfaces definitely should get a little bit of that. And then you can increase your size of your brush, go in lightly on areas like here under the hair. I know that the fire is coming from down here, so it's going to hit the underside of my hair. So I'm definitely going to want to add some glow to that. I know it's going to hit the side of my face because there's some shine there. Same thing, just adding it. And it doesn't have to be perfect because you can always go in and clean it up if you do too much or if it looks too, if it doesn't look right, you can always go in and clean that up. So here I've switched to black and I'm basically just cleaning up areas where I put too much. And if you find the color's not right or it's too much of one thing and not enough of another, like I said, just go click on your main layer and you can take a look at how you can change it to make it lighter or darker or whatever you want. So basically all you're going to be doing is selecting your layer mask selecting white to add and black to remove all of that glow. So I know I'm going to want to put some glow here where there's metal. I want to put some glow here where there's some shine. And you're just adding, adding that glow in anywhere you think it should belong. And you're going to need to clean it up because otherwise you end up with just looking like you painted it on. So you'll re move to black and clean up the spaces. Cleaning it up. And then if you want to go even a step further, you can also go down here to your main layer, double click it, go to inner glow, and then you're going to select a color that's bright from the fire. So try and find a nice bright orange and maybe even take it a step brighter. 
and then increase the size of your glow and you'll see if it looks sort of the right kind of color so maybe we want to go a little bit more reddish So you can see, let me turn it right. trial and error as usual. So you can see that it's created um, some extra glow around the edges. So this is sort of like a cheat way to add the glow. So then I can just choose if my size is good, maybe add a little less glow, click OK. So here you see I have an effect of inner glow. Then I'm going to right click my glow and I'm going to click create layer and it creates another clipping layer here of just the glow and then I can do the same thing I did above and create a layer mask so I'm going to hold alt and click the layer mask down here it'll make that invisible and then I can go in and paint that in if I wanted to oh, I should be probably be in white <laughs> so white will paint the effect in when you have the black layer so I have selected my layer I'm painting in some of that glow and painting it in and just basically adding a little bit of that effect as well. So you can see how the glow effect has come into play. You add some more of the brighter fire color to areas that you think will catch some flame looking stuff. And you basically just keep doing that until you're satisfied with the amount of glow that you have. And then cleaning it up, of course, with the black on each layer mask until you've decided that your glow looks realistic enough. So it's actually a pretty simple process. It's just a little bit of a trial and error of where to put the glow and how much glow and what looks realistic. So always err on the side of caution and put less glow if you think it might look a little extreme. So I end up erasing a lot of the glow that I put in when I do these types of photos. But you can see even in this short amount of time I've created a lot of cool fire glow in this space. So let's take a look at what it looks like without. So here's just my default, no glow, no nothing. And then adding in my glow, I've got sort of the fire effect going on. So that's the basics of creating a glow effect for your green screen photos, or if you had a flat photo, you'd be doing the same principle, but you'd have to do the, you would not be able to do the inner glow effect. You'd be relying on the orange or whatever color layer that you have here. So that is how to make your glow sort of a realistic glow. And it creates these styles that you can add a lot of life to your photos. So it is a good way to take a ordinary photo and make it extraordinary. If you have any questions about adding glow to your photos, you can leave me a comment here on YouTube. You can send me a message on Flickr, Plurk, or in Second Life. And if you have any suggestions, you can do the same. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a good one.